yeah, I've been poor and I've been rich and I've been in between. Wealthy's better, probably, but more money, more problems too. I always tell people, think about life as like a curve and you call it the kind of the efficient frontier. When I had no money, I was sleeping on a couch in a mobile home. I remember seeing $47 in my account and going, and I had very little happiness. Then I built my first funnel and I was one of the first people to use Google AdWords. It was two months old. And I went within nine months, I was making basically 8,000 a month on autopilot. Wow. My happiness went really high. Then I remember really st when you really start to make money, make a million bucks a week or whatever it is. I lived in Beverly Hills. The first month I was there, it was a big house, 17,000 square feet. So you needed a, a fleet of maids. And I used an agency, a maid came, worked one day, month later, get a lawsuit. She said she slipped on a banana peel, wanted money. Wealth, that's the banana peel effect of wealth in the US. All of a sudden you become a target. So what happened on that curve, my happiness went up. All of a sudden I started, you, you can make too much money. Then all of a sudden your happiness plateaus. Then you're like Mark Zuckerberg, who last year spent 32 million on private security. Jesus. That means you have credible threats against your children, kidnapping, you're spending two and a half million a month on security. His happiness has now gone over the cliff and he's, you can actually be so wealthy, you're back to where you were when you were poor. Rockefeller, there's a book called Titan. He's the richest man in modern times, 600 billion net worth. In the book, you can read in about the 1890s, he reached the pinnacle of his success, but he was attacked by the US government. There was a news reporter, this woman that was the thorn in his flesh, always saying he was a scam and blah, blah, blah. And he lost all his hair in his 50s from stress, all of his hair, his eyebrows, eyelashes, hair. And he, he had a moment of clarity where he said, all of the money I have made has not compensated me for the stress I've gone through. Mm. Meaning it's too much. So that's my answer on wealth. Find the point, which for most people is gonna be, you know, six figures of profit, maybe seven figures. When you start going to make eight figures, the banana peel effect, your, somebody's, your best friend's gonna try to steal your money. The tax guys come and show up and go, well, oh, that, did you, was that a real business expense? So try to find the optimal point on the efficient frontier. Now you asked about power. My main mentor in the last 10 years has been Dr. David Buss. He's maybe the most respected living evolutionary psychologist. And I have a female, I like to always have one male mentor and one female, and Dr. Helen Fisher, who's also one of the preeminent scientists. I came to them one day and I said, you know what, there's four M's of motivation for everybody. And I said, what do you think of my theory, Dr. Buss? He said, ah, I think it's a decent theory. He always has his own improvements. But the first M, is material things. The second M is mating. The third M is movement slash freedom. The fourth M is mastery slash sta status. What we get wrong about ourselves and others when it comes to power or wealth is not understanding that almost every wealthy person that I quiz into their unconscious mind, x-ray into the mind, they're not really driven by material things. There's a lot of people who seek money because they like the fourth M, mastery, status, or power. So when it comes to men, men are much more driven by power. I'm already seeing the results. First time I launched this quiz, 6,000 people took it the first day in about 190 countries. So I'm getting good data and I'm finding a pattern. I ask at the end, is your sex male or female? I'm not, I don't get into genders. Sex, okay? I notice a consistent trend. Men care about mastery, status, power. Women do occasionally, but rarely. Um, and that makes sense. Our ancestors, the men, you know, Nietzsche, maybe the second smartest person I've ever read, you know, Nietzsche said, the will to power. This is the force that drives earth. Donald Trump, Joe Biden, they are there because they had the will to power. They were like, I want power. Um, the lobbyists, the pharmaceutical companies, we think they just want wealth. But there's men sitting there that want power more than everything. Very few men, if you give them a choice and say, do you really love money? Like, I'm going to give you material things. You get all the jewelry you want. Okay, you get all the jewelry. You get all the luxury designer clothing, but you have no power status. Very few men will take that. 
But if I say to you, look, bro, no jewelry, no Rolexes, but you walk in a room and men fear you, want to be you. Men, 80% of the time, take that. So power is a very sex-specific thing. Women, um, or at least the female sex, don't seem as driven by that. But, uh, but to be clear, I find about 20% of women are also driven by status. Now, if you hold your hand up, I've never seen your hand. Can I see? Are you right or left? Okay. Uh, so this is digit index ratio. Pretty good science. Some scientists disagree with it, but there's about 40 studies. You have a lot of testosterone. You're a very driven, ambitious person. This, you're very similar to me. This is higher. This is prenatal testosterone androgen kind of receptor. When you're in the womb, you get like this dosage, which sets the course of your life. You are probably more driven when you see a hand like this and you and also you can do other testing to, to find this out. Driven a little bit like Nietzsche, the will to power, the will to be known, the will to be respected. You have a podcast, you're building a personal brand. By the way, there's nothing wrong about it. Sometimes people try to go, no, that's not me, I'm not materialistic. I'm more like Einstein. I don't believe that much in free will. You know, if you read the, the Walter Isaacson book on Einstein, pretty smart guy. He's like, God, a free will doesn't exist. Now, that's if you're a quantum physicist, you'll probably disagree and say that free will does exist. If you love power, some of it's predestined. You can see it in the womb. And so I think men have to come to grips with their will to power because the will to power also can drive you, can be your demon. You know, it can be your angel sitting here or it can be your demon wealth and power are like a pit bull and when they're on your side they're wonderful guardians but if they ever turn against you they'll rip you to shreds that is very succinct so the thing that i i agree with all of that and the thing that i would add is once i came to understand that the true nature of money is to be a facilitator in and of itself it doesn't do anything i mean if you really think about it and this the analogy i'm about to make made a lot more sense before uh crypto but what i used to tell people is money cash only has potential heat energy in and of itself you can burn it it will release heat that's really all it has except for the fact that we all say that thing is valuable and mm -hmm. therefore, as long as we believe in it, then it will carry um, some further potential in it. But the potential that it has, I think people always think it's going to make them feel about themselves the way they feel about other people that have money. Mm -hmm. So they look at that person and they admire them, they wanna be them, they're driven by envy, I've heard you say that, yes. I think that's pretty accurate. And they think, oh, all this envy that I have for that person, if I get the money, I will feel complete, powerful, amazing. But the reality is money can't touch how you feel about yourself. Yeah. And so ultimately, I think the thing that people strive for is to feel a certain way about themselves, which is why if you say to somebody, you can be feared yeah. and admired, I yeah. think there's something about that, that. And there is an element of, I think part of that particular question the thing that turns them on is, oh, they're gonna fear me? Yeah. Because people instinctively know that they will then be able to wield their power. Yeah. Because if I were going to define power, I would say it's the ability to manifest your will. And mm -hmm. I don't mean manifest in like a woo-woo sense. I mean, manifest as in you close your eyes, you imagine the world you want to exist, you open your eyes, and you actually go make that world come true.